Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, we come here to praise the Lord in the depths of our minds and hearts, even though physically we are somewhat restrained because of the pandemic. But nothing should suppress our spirits in offering our song of praise to you. And so with grateful hearts for being called to form a worshiping community, we continue to prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness. But for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well, you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things nor future things, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other creature will able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord the word of the Lord. Thanks. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, 
Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. And then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, gave them to his disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied and they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a bright side and a dark side to our readings today. And we don't see the dark side too well because the news is bright, full of hope. The intervention of God is always shining light and brightness in our lives. But if you look at the dark side, you can see that you're dealing with tragedy and death and destruction beginning with the first reading when it sounds great, you know, come, if you don't have any money, you can drink wine and you can eat all you want and you'll be satisfied. Oh, that's, that's the bright side. But to whom is the prophet Isaiah talking? He's talking to people who are in exile and have been in exile for decades. And now they're returning back to their own home but their own home is like people in modern day, whether from Assyria or Afghanistan, to return back to your village and find out it is bombed out. Very little life there, you have to rebuild all over again. Half your family is gone. Infrastructure does not exist, you have to build up everything. And so yes, that is the context of Isaiah's congregation saying, good news, you've been liberated, you're going back. Bad news, you have to build it up again. And therefore he assures them of God's fidelity that he is faithful to his covenant that is made with David. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant. Heed me that you may have life but you're going to have to cooperate with my grace and work for it. And I will bless you with a superabundance of food. The gospel, the dark side is in the first sentence. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a desert, <clears throat> deserted place by himself. Why did it withdraw to be by himself? To mourn. John the Baptist and he were the greatest of friends on a spiritual level. He knew that the Baptist was to prepare his way. Jesus said of John, no man born of a woman was greater than John the Baptist. And when he heard his, of his death, he had to go and mourn, as we all have to do when someone dear to us departs from our lives. And not only did he have to mourn, but he also had to think about now his mission because he knew he was taking up where John the Baptist left over. And what happened to John the Baptist could happen to him and did happen to him. And so he had to prepare himself for his mission to get the strength to be able to go on despite the bloody tyrants of this world. I mean, the horrendous circumstances in which John the Baptist died, died because of a drunken tyrant swearing an oath because of some lewd dance that he had witnessed. A great prophet, a spiritual genius, 
slaughtered by someone as a mere whimsy. That's the dark side of the readings today. The bright side, of course, that Isaiah does promise a banquet, despite the fact that they have to rebuild their whole society and rebuild the temple and rebuild their infrastructures. But God is with them with an abundance, not merely of food, but of grace and of love and of mercy. As we have in the Psalm, the Lord is gracious and merciful, good to all, compassion to all his works. And the bright side of the gospel, again, the notion of superabundance. The Lord feeds the crowd abundantly. Twelve baskets left over. <laughs> How many baskets were there to give to 5,000 men? Notice the words that when Jesus saw the crowds, he was moved with pity. Now, the multiplication of the loaves is narrated six times in the Gospels. And in this particular narration, you have Jesus was moved with pity and he cures the sick. In other areas, he's moved with pity and he teaches them. But they need both. They need guidance and light. They need to be taught. But in this particular case, being moved with pity, he feeds them, conscious of their needs, conscious of their hunger and thirst, and hoping that they would be thirsting and hungering for the spiritual food that Jesus has to offer, as well as for the material foods. And so he feeds them as well as curing their sick. What do we take home from the readings today? The first thing is that while there's a darkness and a brightness, the darkness does not win out, but the brightness of God's love, mercy, and glory is always supreme. That is something that should be unshaken. The Lord is kind and merciful whether things are good or things are bad, whether things are going well or things seem to be going up. The Lord is kind and merciful. That's the constant bright side of every aspect of our lives. And the other is that a little does a lot because the Lord says, feed them yourselves. Oh, Feed them ourselves. We only have five loaves and two fish. What is that for so many? Feed them yourselves. The little bit that you have, you'd be surprised. If you are in line with God, it goes a long way. You have a kind word, give it. You have a letter to write to your congressman, write it. You have a vote to cast, cast it. A little bit. You don't think it's much, but you'd be surprised how powerful that could be. Let God do the work, but do your share. Don't say, oh, not my problem. Maybe it'll go away. No. A little bit goes a long way. And the other lesson is found in the words when the disciples approach Jesus. And he's, they say, they recommend, they dismiss the crowds. Does that sound familiar? There's a problem? Dismiss the problem. You know? oh, there's a pandemic? Oh, maybe it'll go away. <laughs> You don't dismiss, but you gather them together. You gather together in solidarity so that together we can go through this and together we can come to some solution. So rather than separate and dismiss, we gather together and form a solidarity. And that's what the body of Christ is all about. And so St. Paul says, who can say, well, what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing should separate us. He draws the list, anguish, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or the sword, left out one thing, the pandemic. 
that will not separate us from the love of Christ. No matter how bad things get, I am convinced neither death nor life nor any other creature be able to separate us We are one with Christ. And despite the fact that we are forced in this situation to have social distancing, we should have spiritual bonding. We have social distancing as you are, six feet apart. And that's necessary. But spiritually we are bonded together. We don't separate each other. We bond together in the spirit of love and charity as people of the body of Christ, proclaiming that the Lord is good and compassionate in all his works. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We now rise for our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last. Amen. Let us pray. God's love is made visible in Christ Jesus, and the food of the Eucharist is the greatest gift of his love. Let us pray to the Lord who feeds us and answers our needs. For the bishops, priests, deacons in their daily ministry of the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For governments and relief agencies helping to feed the starving people of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For men, women, children threatened or attacked because of their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who produce, prepare, and serve the food we eat, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially those who are victims of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, all the departed, especially who have died because of the virus, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of the heavenly home, especially do we remember the deceased members of the Garney and Roberts family, the special intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we now pause to include our own intentions. Most bountiful Father, grant the favors we seek as we renew the covenant and look forward to the feast of the kingdom in the celebration of this Eucharistic sacrifice, for we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have loved you with an everlasting I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for him. He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you Please rise as we pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you make all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy our Bishop, the clergy, and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
is through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now approach our merciful Father using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, Father who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we now exchange a sign of welcome and of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make us worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, descend upon us and remain with us forever and ever. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Nice to see you again. You too. <laughs>